Hey everybody, Mark Davis coming at you in the immediate aftermath of our June 2nd, 2015 talk show. And the phone lines still fairly crackle with NSA surveillance as a topic, so let's try to tackle this and maybe make it a little easier to understand, a little easier to have some clarity, if not full agreement, because we're not going to have agreement on this. There is the Rand Paul faction, and I love Senator Paul when he is right on issues of constitutional fidelity, issues of strong but limited government, issues of uh, battling Obama. Obamacare. I absolutely love the guy. But on this NSA surveillance paranoia, good grief, what's going on here? Well, I'll tell you what's going on here is there are people who are attempting to demonize, people who are attempting to slander, quite literally slander, the good heroes who have tried to keep us safe since 9-11 by doing something. You ready? Here's what they're doing. If you think that there are NSA guys with headphones hunched over laptops and getting signals where they're listening to you and your Aunt Margaret talk about your summer vacation plans, you are wrong. These people are wrong who have tried to scare the living daylights out of you into this notion that there's, there's their evil NSA and CIA guys who are tracking your emails and tracking your phone calls. Now here's how we got here. I understand how we got here, even though that is provably false. And by the way, so is the notion that this is somehow unconstitutional. You cannot make stuff up. Stuff has either been determined to be unconstitutional or it has not. There are all kinds of things that you can think are unconstitutional, like Roe versus Wade, but that hasn't been adjudicated yet. That's just an opinion from me at this point. The notion of this kind of surveillance, it is a factual statement that this has been found to be constitutional. The problem with the Patriot Act is that Section 215, where there may be a legality issue, where there may need to be some fine-tuning in the law, so here's how to fine-tune it. What we have is a situation where post 9-11, everybody said, oh, we should have seen this coming. Why couldn't we connect the dots? Uh, intelligence is like needles in a haystack. You need to be able to survey the scene. We need to be better at this. Well, we're trying to get better at this. This is what it looks like to get better at this. You can't connect the dots if you don't have the dots. Now, the dots are as follows. They are defined as such. Here's what is going on. The NSA keeps track of the following. If I call you and you are in Saudi Arabia or Yemen or Afghanistan and I make enough calls to you, it is noticed that something from my location made a contact to something in that location with enough of a pattern that it might merit further scrutiny. The NSA does not know who I am. The NSA does not know who you are. The NSA does not know your phone number. The NSA does not know your address as a result of any of these things. I've always said, this is why I've always had the best time with callers on this, I've said, show me the Rosa Parks of NSA surveillance. Show me the one person whose life has been all screwed up. Can you imagine that press conference? Hi, I'm Biff Jones. The NSA was after me and my life and my livelihood's been ruined. This is all terrible. I mean, then I would board the train and say, look, we have actual abuse, but you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You don't get rid of your police force because there might be police brutality. You don't get rid of the FBI because some agent might do something wrong someday. Here's the problem we face. And I understand this problem. We are in a season of almost total mistrust of government. <laughs> you think? I've, I've probably helped stoke that atmosphere. And I will continue to because there are areas in which government is completely untrustworthy. This might be one of the rare examples of something government actually does well. Something government actually does honestly. So here's how we move forward. You keep the Patriot Act, this whole new thing, the USA Freedom Act, this is for the birds. We're going to make the phone company keep all of this? Really? We're gonna, and I love AT&T, but we're going to let them do national security work? Can we even force the phone company to keep all these records? I can just see some phone company coming down the pike and having some online advertising that says, hey, tired of having the phone company keep your records? Sign up with us. We don't keep nothing. You know, and, there you, and, and so you can't farm this out to the private sector. There's a very short list of things that government should do. Keeping us safe in this way is one of them. So here's the path forward. 
keep an eye peeled on them, watch them like a hawk. When the IRS tried to screw conservative groups through Lois Lerner, we found her. We know this. There's a, well, there is an accountability, but at least we know her and we found this. The accountability, one hopes, will sometimes come if we have a president who's not willing to build a protection racket around this kind of stuff. But we know it. We know the IRS abused its power. The NSA has not. The CIA has not. If they ever do, we're going to know it because there will be a press conference and let's react at that time and have accountability at that time rather than shut down something that absolutely keeps us safe. A final word on whether this has actually stopped one or two or 27 terrorist acts. This ain't the way it works. Everybody thinks we're, that it's going to be like some bad movie or some Tom Clancy novel in which just as someone is about to hit the button on the cell phone that blows up some skyscraper in Los Angeles, aha, the agents will come rushing in having been given a clue earlier that day by NSA surveillance. It doesn't work that way. NSA surveillance builds a framework. It builds a tapestry. Fighting terror, as any intelligence officer will tell you, is a busy, multi-layered, and usually mind-numbingly dull process by which they are able to find a strand here, a data point there, that might lead to some underlying understanding of the way in which terror might be funded in a fashion that might have led to a terrorist act in the year 2017 in some far-flung part of the world. Or you could stop the next 9-11 or anything in between. That's how it works. It's a good idea to have. Let us not sacrifice a huge degree of our national security on a false and unfounded basis of somehow our privacy having been breached. It hasn't been. Rest well. Mark Davis, thanks for listening to the show and watching this. Appreciate it. 660 AMTheAnswer.com.